In this video, we're going to talk about exponential functions. Um, we'll go ahead and start with the definition. Uh, so the definition of an exponential function is a to the x. Uh, the base a uh, is a real number. Um, the a must be bigger than 0, and a cannot equal 1. The graph of an exponential function uh, is, is somewhat intuitive uh, in the sense that um, you've probably heard the expression, something grows at an exponential rate. Um, and that's really what's happening here, uh, where the function is, is starting off very, very small and is, is growing quite quickly uh, on top of itself. So <clears throat> the uh, overall picture uh, looks something like this. Um, a very important point that we're going to be talking about is the point right here, which is 0, 1. Um, and we actually also have an asymptote at y equals zero. So the asymptote more or less bounds the graph above the x-axis um, over here at positive, or excuse me, at negative infinity, the graph you can see is getting really, really close, but it's not touching it or crossing it either. Now this is a, a new parent function for us, and we'll start graphing this uh, using transformations here in a moment. Uh, but before we do that, um, I think it's worth our time to, to have a brief conversation at least about uh, the graphs of y equals 3 to the x uh, versus y equals uh, 1 third to the x. Now, for the most part, the graph of y equals 3 to the x is what I just drew. Um, you can see that if x is 0, your y still ends up being 1. So that point is not dependent upon the base. As for the graph of y equals 1 third to the x, um, now we're, we're not going to plot points in this course, um, but, but you certainly could in order to better understand um, what the graph looked like. Um, it actually is a similar graph to what I have over there except instead of being an increasing function, it's actually a decreasing function. So <clears throat> we still have our point, just like I mentioned before, how it's not dependent upon the base uh, at 0, 1. Um, and we still also have the asymptote at y equals 0. So the 3 versus the 1 third uh, is very, very important. Um, you can also note that if we have one third to the x, that that can also be written now as three to the negative x. So we need to be clear about the base and the exponent being positive or negative. Um, a negative exponent, a negative exponent, this guy right here, which you'll see quite a bit, that implies a change from an increasing function to a decreasing function. Um, a lot of times students will think that it's a reflection about the y-axis, and, and that's, a, that's a conversation for a different day. Uh, but in the context of what we're studying, and, and to also apply it then to a later section, uh, I want you to visualize or want you to think of that negative um, on the exponent as a change from an increasing function to a decreasing function, okay? Now, <clears throat> the last thing I'll say before we get into an actual problem is, kind of just in summary, um, if a is bigger than 1, f is increasing. And if a is between 0 and 1, f would be decreasing. So that's more or less just a summary of what I described. Um, it's, it's a combination of the, the base being either a proper fraction or uh, bigger than 1. Uh, and the fact that you either do or don't have uh, the negative exponent uh, on the exponential function. So um, a couple different moving parts there to, to, to always keep in mind. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at an example here. Okay, so to, to graph our first example, um, again, we'll go ahead and start with the parent function, uh, which is y equals 2 to the x. I'll sketch this up here uh, as an increasing exponential curve. Uh, we've got our point that we're going to track at 0, 1, and our asymptote is at y equals 0. <clears throat> so there's going to be uh, a couple different transformations here we need to consider. Um, I'll go ahead and write them out, uh, and then I'll go ahead and sketch the graph as well. So the first thing we would do is we would take the uh, parent function, and we'd shift it three units 
to the right, we would have to then reflect about the x-axis. And that's important to note, reflect about the x-axis. And then the third thing we would do is go one unit down. So um, those are the three things we're going to need to do in that order. So taking the parent function and moving it three units to the right uh, would look something like this, where our point would be picked up and moved now from 0, 1 to the point uh, 3, 1. <clears throat> and our asymptote would still be at y equals 0. Um, and this is the graph currently of y equals 2 to the x minus 3. Uh, and I'm always in, I always encourage you to, to plot that or take that point that you found and plug it in to make sure that it works and you moved in the correct direction. Uh, and you can see if x is going to be 3, you get 2 to the 0, which is 1. So we know we moved it correctly. Um, the next graph then would be uh, y equals negative 2 to the x minus 3. So I would take the previous graph and I would reflect it about the x-axis. So our point now would be at 3, negative 1, uh, and the asymptote is still at y equals 0. And once again, take the point, plug it back into the, the, the equation uh, from above, and it should work. Uh, and then finally, the last graph would be to move this whole graph one unit down. So I'll come over here and do that. <clears throat> so if I take it and I move it one unit down, this is where you'll be able to notice the asymptote is going to change. The asymptote was originally at y equals 0, and we moved it down one unit, so it's now going to be at y equals negative 1. Uh, and our point now will be at 3, negative 2. So that is our final graph. And again, that point 3, negative 2, I, I would encourage you to plug back in uh, to the original uh, and make sure that we move things the correct way. And then the last thing that we'll do on a problem like this is we will go ahead, go ahead and identify the domain and range. Um, the domain on an exponential function would be negative to positive infinity. Um, all that values are allowed to be plugged in for, to the independent variable. Uh, and the range in this particular case would be negative infinity all the way up to negative 1, but not including the negative 1 because that's our asymptote. 